another late video. Monday morning it is, and a uh, whole weekend went by without me posting my video. Uh, which leads me to the theme of this, at least of this morning's uh, introduction, is uh, willpower, I think is what I will call it. And um, it is a limited resource. And what I am not good at doing is recognizing what times of the day, what activities I have planned, um, when I eat, when I drink, uh, let's say caffeine, like coffee, like this is a, I limit myself to two cups a day, and these are, this is kind of wheat coffee, so it's, I drink two of these and I consider that two cups of coffee. Um, <clears throat> so there are things that I am putting off that when I get tired, when I kind of say, oh, I'll do it in the, at the end of the day, I have a nice day, let's go work outside and get those projects done while I have a nice, nice weather. And then I get done with all that, I'm tired, I eat something, and before you know it, I am in going to bed mode. Um, having not accomplished those few, like, uh, mentally and emotionally, for whatever reason, uh, difficult tasks that I um, am unable to push through and get done because they, they're weighing heavy on me emotionally. So... It is the morning. I'm having a coffee. And I have things to do outside. It is actually, uh, it rained another, probably a good inch last night. Uh, but the sun is out now. I have, I just came back from Menards. I have material to start working on a, a project that I actually really would like to get done, um, which would make my life in the tiny house better, which is my composting toilet to make it really kind of composting toilet 2.0, have it be more of a fully functioning composting toilet instead of the like absolute basic, just bucket with a sack in it and pouring sawdust over the top of it. I'm wanting to make more of the, the churning style, like the nature's head, sea head type. Uh, with the urine diverter and um, get a hole cut in, you know, to use the seat and have it just be done. And it's kind of like a, uh, you know, like living in a, or using a regular toilet. Um, but there are some tasks that I have to get done, like posting this video. Uh, making the video, which means, yeah, posting, which means making it first, recording this, uh, then there's other stuff for the bakery, emails that I need to send off that I've been putting off for two weeks, uh, and I'm not really sure, well, it doesn't matter why, it's just this feeling I have, but I got it. I'm going to push through, get it done, I know I will feel so much better when that's done. Um, and then try to time out my tasks better because life's going to get busy, really busy here now in the summer, or it already has gotten busy. So I've got, you know, farmer's markets takes, zaps stuff out of me. Um, the Dundee project is still ongoing. There are still lingering tasks, which I need to also, um, make progress on. And uh, so that doesn't get pushed off into the future when it should get done now. Um, so 
as you can see, I cut my, the top of my knuckle with a uh, four inch hole cut bit. I was making a strawberry tower, which, boy, I don't know if I've recorded anything about that, but I made it uh, while I was cutting the holes for the kind of the side shoot planter things. Um, the whole tube rotated, the blade caught, and it just kind of like, it jumped off and hit my thumb. Which was not, which was very scary at first, because I'm like, God, how deep is that? Uh, did I cut any tendons? Did I hurt my knuckle? Did I, like, how far, how, de how deep did it go? Um, apparently, um, nothing too serious. I just have a, kind of a nice nasty, nasty gash there. Um, it's healing. I have my nice little duct tape band-aid on it, so it's doing well. I'm keeping it clean. Um, so, be careful. Uh, you forget how, it's easy to forget how nice it is to be healthy, injury free, and so every once in a while I have to cut myself or injure myself to remind myself how nice it is. So, there's a little bit of good in every little bad if you take the time to perceive it. Um, and that's an important lesson because um, happiness is a decision, suffering is a decision, and you can choose um, to take a bad thing and suffer or you can s learn a lesson from it make it a good thing, a happy thing, take a mundane thing, decide, wow, this is wonderful that I get to do whatever, go for a walk, drive my car to wherever. Uh, mowing the lawn used to be such a drudgery and now it's like, oh, it's a little bit of exercise, I make the lawn look nice, um, I get composting material with the clippings because I collect them, even though that's more work. Um, add it to my garden, uh, which is starting to take off here a little bit. Um, and then be patient with the garden. I wish it would grow faster, but hey, everything in its own time. So I'm happy that things came up. I should just be content with that, be happy with that. And I and I am. I stop and saying, why isn't it, you know, three feet tall? Well, it will be. And then I'll probably complain about how fast things are growing and out of control. Or at least I could. I will certainly have the opportunity to. But um, I will... Take a moment, be happy that I have this, I have way, probably way too many plants and I'm not going to know what to do with everything, but that'll be more opportunity to gift things away, maybe trade things for things that I'm not growing. So it's all going to be excellent. Um, looking forward to that. Um, that will wrap up this segment and um, I will see what I have on my camera to add on to the end of it this video for the week for last week um, so until next time uh, it's a Friday night I'm just here uh, finished dinner and watching some gardening videos on YouTube. Uh, little update, so as you know, well, as I described in last week's videos, that would have been just last night, happened this whole battery snafu with it being super hot, 
and once again it was warm and humid. This afternoon I was like, I can't take this or I'm not, I'm wimping out. So I ran an extension cord to the, to the garage uh, and I ran it for a little bit uh, and that's going to be a lifesaver I think because I don't have plans to spend a thousand dollars on a battery to buy to double I mean another six thousand dollars in batteries that's a lot of money I guess I could do some sort of like a more permanent like a non-traveling set of batteries that could be like in the garage that I could charge from the panel because I do have extra sun electricity from the panels and I could build a, a less expensive battery bank over there um, but I'm an extension cord is cheap because I already had it so it was free it's a free solution well not the electricity but that's pretty inexpensive and I'm just cooling a small little room here so all in all the first floor of the house now is completely off-grid almost like it uses there's no air conditioning in there there's no lights running there's no I guess the fridge is on the fridge is running because there's still some odds and ends in there so for to me to run this one thing it seems like it's a fair trade-off had a problem with my bed, it fell, it broke, the screws I had, well I was like, that lasted, well, you know, six months probably. So hopefully I have a little bit more of a permanent solution. It's not the final solution, but hopefully it's a more permanent solution. I have also discovered, well, watching gardening videos, <clears throat> there are, I have a lot of wild blue violet flowers or plants or whatever uh, in, in my garden and what I was calling weeds back when I was going through my my lawn garden area uh, a lot of that's all edible so in fact that's fine to have that there because I can pick that and make it a, a salad out of it so in reality like growing lettuce and like my my raised beds are kind of being wasted since I have so many options. I've got dandelions. I have those uh, wild blue violet flowers. I've got quite a few of them on, in my yard. Um, I think you can even eat clover. I mean, although it's not a lot of clover, but. I have a, quite a bit of greens, so I'm definitely not going to plant any more of those. Um, what I would like to plant would be uh, like some ginger or turmeric. Uh, that would be kind of interesting. I just want things of what I have to grow, because I don't want to have this big spotty, like half-filled garden. But. I'm, I'm still optimistic. I was out there this last, at the end, before I ate, and uh, I found some more um, shoots coming out of the ground. So, some seedlings. So it's good, they keep coming up. It is a rainy Tuesday morning, and it was pretty rainy, cloudy, on uh, Monday too, so it was a lot of indoor projects uh, as an in indoor tiny house projects. Um, and I do remember, so I have some upgrades and then I also remembered I had some, um, I missed a couple from last week, so I'm going to try not to forget by shooting this right now. So let's get to it i should also note it is 
40, can you, oh, 48 degrees outside, 64 inside. I've got my Wave 3, Olympian Wave 3 heater going at, so 48 degrees has been that basically since, uh, from the time I got up. So I put it on high, so that was 3,000 BTUs. It warmed it up, it got down to about 54 in here. Uh, so it popped it up to 64 pretty fast. Uh, now I've got it on low and it's been maintaining quite well. Um, so, I mean, it's very comfortable. I mean, even though I'm wearing two, three layers, I don't need to. Um, especially when I'm sitting, it's right here in front of me. That's exactly how I planned it. You know, with that, with this TV holder so I can be like, you know, like when I was actually laying in bed, I turned it on and then I was able to like really focus it on me. Now I'm sitting, so I focus it there. And getting that, you know, it doesn't really, it's not like, oh, I'm going to heat up this whole room. It doesn't do a great job. It's too much space for that. But, um, if you really want to feel the warmth, direct it towards you so that's that's fantastic now on to um, small and maybe medium upgrades so this is a small upgrade my knife holder so I just screwed in what I already had on the wall somewhere so here we go the little hook for the my uh, knife sharpener. It's not a knife sharpener, it's an edge truer thing. What is it called? I can't remember. Like I'm, uh, hmm. Anyways. Uh, moving on to a messy little sink here, but so this is right here. This is my fresh water. So I installed underneath the sink. If you can see it there, a two-stage uh, inline kind of home uh, water filter system and it has been fantastic I thought about you know the Brita filters and I'm like I know those things take forever to actually filter the water and I don't want to have to keep a container full so this on-demand water is fantastic so look at that I want a glass of water, fill up my teapot, which I did this morning to make some coffee. And that's it. And, you know, the water pump to run that is really not that loud. I think it's one of the best ideas. So, what I did have to do is then make a new hole in my sink to put the uh, soap pump, which I do really like having uh, a semi-concealed soap pump instead of having a bottle like sitting here on my counter or having to open the cabinet down here to grab it. That is not good, or it's not convenient, and I like convenience. The other upgrade is this fan. So before it might have been visible, but like in this area, I had a oscillating fan that would on a, a stand, but it was pretty big and it was taking up floor space. So now I can put my toolboxes in here. And, but this is great. It doesn't blow quite as much air now I have light in the bathroom, so there we go. Very nice. The other thing I installed is this switch. So you can hear the difference in the noise level. But that is a vent fan for my bathroom. Because, let's just be honest, it gets a little stinky 
you know, when people say, oh, a composting toilet doesn't smell at all, well, I have a hard time believing that right after you do your business, it doesn't smell. Well, using the bucket system with no, with not much of a lid, it did a little bit and enough that I didn't like it. So, I drilled a hole. If I, so this was just to consolidate. So there's my bucket. And I drilled a hole into the floor to the outside with a dryer vent hookup so it has a little flap and it blows it out and back um, with a, the smallest fan I could get and it's a little bit louder than I was hoping a, certainly a lot louder in this small space than it was in the big in Menards in the big open space but I do have these panels on the sides and it does help a little bit with uh, insulating the noise it also consolidates where the air sucks from and what I've done with the cat litter box because the cat litter is now permanently in here in the tiny house I'm gonna run and it's in my closet I thought it was gonna live in this area but that boy that's a lot smaller than I thought I don't think my cat could fit in there buddy buddy couldn't fit in there could you he's pretty fat but anyways I'm gonna run a hose from I've got a wall that goes that way that blocks it off. I'm going to run it through this area. This area now will become storage for bathroom stuff. Through this closet, the wall between the bathroom and the closet. And it will go through the, so through this wall and then I will drill a hole into the cat litter box hat with a lid that can flap open maybe cut a little bit here and that way you can suck air from this cat litter box which can smell at times too because let's be honest cat well all poop stinks right no matter who makes it so that'll be great so consolidate or I mean suck this air into that little cavity in the bathroom into there and then it will all just get sucked out and it's fantastic. I think I'm going to, instead of having a switch, I will do the kind of normal like timer switch. So, you know, I do my business and set it for 15 minutes and then let it, you know, get the worst while it's drying out. Um, I've also switched composting medium so I had peat moss before now I have um, kind of like hamster bedding so it's like kind of coarse sawdust and I think that is going to do a much better job well I hope at least um, we'll see I'm gonna work on moving this propane all my propane outside so, because I don't like turning propane tanks on and off, especially like if I use 15 seconds or 30 seconds of hot water, uh, I don't like to have, oh, let's go in here and turn the water, the propane on, use it, then turn it off. And with this whole system at this morning, I thought I could vent this down into my toilet area. So, get a hose a vent hose to come up over and down and then into drill a hole there go through that corner 
and down into that area so that all my exhaust fumes can also be uh, taken care of while that's in use. So that would be another fabulous use of this whole vent system that I have going. So I hadn't thought of that before, but I think it's a potentially good idea. And Buddy wants to go outside, don't you? Except it's raining and you're going to spend 15 seconds out there and then you're going to want to come back in. But we'll let you try to be happy for just a moment. Or maybe you want more food, but I'm not going to give you more food. All right, we'll give him some privacy. So I installed this today. This piping. Vent pipe. So I had a 3 inch exhaust vent hole here and I used actual so this first 90 degrees is an actual uh, made for heat and then this other then the second 90 degree is not it's a uh, just a closed dryer vent and then this is the same then this is just that ex extendable three inch vent hose and it goes down into where my toilet is and then that gets sucked out. I have it on and I've tried it, I've worked it, I've washed some dishes, ran the hot water and it seems to not be too bad. It does get a little warm there at that first 90 is the most hot and then it gets this this doesn't get too hot um and if i'm just running hot water you know for five seconds or ten seconds when i'm washing dishes i don't turn on the fan or i don't think it's necessary because it doesn't run that long but if i do plan on running it longer i think i will run the vent fan that is down inside this in this box there and that should be pretty good it works in both cases i did run it to see if it would like i don't know suck too much air but i find that difficult to believe and it was seemed to be fine so i'm pretty happy with that i almost forgot i also added this vent timer switch so uh, well i don't have it completely the front part isn't on but I can set it to run for so many minutes and then it'll shut off because it will use I think it uses about 150 watts of power so I don't want to just turn it on and then walk out of here and then have it wear down my battery if I don't want it to but I can this way I can get an hour worth of running. So that should be fine. Because uh, honestly, with the addition of that and the, the vent and then these walls here, the smell of what's behind there is not n is not noticeable at all it is truly a no smell um, operation I've got going on now this thing this is what I was thinking for the cat litter box so I would drill through this wall here into my closet and actually into the bed so this would fit in there flush and then peek into that or not peek but it would poke into the it would extend into this area right here and then I could extend with a little another piece of hose into the uh, my toilet enclosed toilet area so 
but I ran out of this pipe. I didn't, I, I used up more of it than I thought I would. So, and I want a three inch hole. I have a four inch hole bit that I cut this with. And that's fine that that's a little bit big, but I don't want to cut a bigger hole that I need to to run this guy through the wall. So here's another little, this is a cat edition, because my cat seems to like to look out that window. Maybe I need to add a step so it knows that it can actually get up there because it knows how to get down, but I've never seen it get up there. So I have its old pillow up there where it used to sleep on, so I thought it would be comfy. Um, and then it can lay there and just look out the window. Right now, it, he just seems to want to stand on my clothes drawer and uh, look out. But I think eventually, because I know cats like to be high, so I think maybe it'll eventually, when I'm not here, maybe use it more than when I'm here. Because when I'm here, he likes to hang out with me on this blanket that I put above my solar system stuff while I'm working on my computer and whatnot. Then he sits there and then I can pet him while I'm working because he likes to hang out with me if I'm in, in here. So that may be why he is uh, not yet climbed up on his perch bed. So here I am making just showing this one elbow I am running gas throughout my tiny house with copper and running it through there through there across there through there there and under my sink and then it's gonna go down here and I'm gonna put a shutoff valve there um, and a I might have to get another 90 elbow because uh, that was a pain in the butt to bend that this half inch pipe it was a huge mistake I should have done 3 8 but it is what it is and now the rest I have to go through that corner there around my water tank I'm glad I filled that up almost all the way well and around the back side of my corner around there down into here so now I have gas coming in from the outside and then I have a shutoff valve and a T for my gas line that goes up to my hot water to my water heater not hot water heater it heats cold water to make it hot. At least that's the idea. And then, let's go outside. All right, now we're underneath the nose. Here I can show you the, this is my soffit dryer vent. This is actually my toilet vent. It vents out going back. And then right next to it is my hose that comes out. And up here to my I don't have the holder yet that's on order but here's my auto switch regulator and a or valve with a my master regulator and so that will all be outside now I feel good about that I don't want to have tanks inside not only because it's theoretically not safe it just takes up space and it's an eyesore so and it needs to be done